My name is Humberto Madriña and I will be presenting at the 2021 IWBNC the e-poster called Spinal Arteriovenous Malformations, the case series from a single institution in Bogota, Colombia. Spinal arteriovenous malformations are a collection of diverse entities comprising arteriovenous malformations and dural arteriovenous fistulae, and even though they are an infrequent pathology, they can have devastating outcomes. The clinical presentation depends on the location of the lesion and also in its pathophysiology, which is secondary to venous congestion and hypertension, flow distribution, and hemorrhage. Multiple classification schemes have been developed over the years. The most frequently used is the one described by Rosenblum in 1987, which classifies AVMs in four types. Type 1 is the dural AVF. Type 2 is the intramedullary glomus AVM. Type 3 is the intramedullary juvenile AVM, and type 4 is the intradural direct AVF. We present a retrospective case series from 2013 to 2019, which included female and male patients older than 15 years of age with confirmed diagnosis of spinal AVM or spinal dural AVF. The general objectives were to describe a case series of patients with spinal arteriovenous malformations, to describe the type of malformation, the clinical presentation, the modified McCormick scale, the treatment, and the outcome. Neurologic evaluation and outcome were registered with the modified McCormick scale, which includes five grades of neurologic compromise, where grade one is intact and grade five is paraplegic or quadriplegic. A total of eight patients were included in the analysis, where seven of them were male and seven of them had thoracic spinal cord lesions. In our case series, the most frequent spinal arteriovenous malformation was type 1 or dural AVF. The second one was type 4 or intradural direct AVF. And we present a case of an intramedullary juvenile AVM. The most frequent signs and symptoms of presentation were paresthesia, paresis or paralysis, pain, myelopathy, and sphincter disturbances. Regarding the treatment options, six of eight patients received endovascular treatment and two of eight patients received combined endovascular and open vascular surgery. Regarding the outcome on last follow-up, three of seven patients had an improved McCormick scale and four did not change. We briefly present the case of an intramedullary juvenile AVM in a 19-year-old woman who presented with sudden cervical pain, paraplegia, and depressis. The cervical MRI revealed a spinal cord enlargement at the C5 level with signs of hemorrhage and extensive edema with an extra spinal compromise in the C6 vertebral body. Through a right subclavian artery injection, an arteriovenous malformation is seen feeding through muscular branches in the cervical spine. Due to the findings in the MRI and the spinal arteriography, we classified this AVM as a metameric AVM. A combined treatment strategy was determined with a pre-surgical embolization with Onyx. Through a cervical laminectomy, we performed a midline dorsal myelotomy guided with direct stimulation. This enabled to drain a spinal cord compressing hematoma to excise the nidus with the embolization material and then intraspinal engorged vessels were coagulated. The control MRI early in the postoperative period shows a persistent spinal cord edema and hemorrhagic changes with disappearance of the nidus. On control angiography, the nidus was effectively resected. Due to concerns in spinal instability, we performed a posterior arthrodesis during the open vascular procedure. Observation was determined for the compromise of the vertebral body of C6. This patient presented with no post-op complications. The McCormick scale of presentation and discharge was 5 and at last follow-up was 4. Spinal arteriovenous malformations are an ample clinical entity. In our study group, the most frequent malformation was type 1 or dural AVF. The thoracic segment was the most frequently involved and the most frequent treatment strategy used was endovascular. The most frequent complaints at presentation were paresthesia, motor disturbances, and pain. 
The key for a successful treatment is a multidisciplinary team and a thorough knowledge of the vascular architecture. Thank you very much.